Welcome to the Halloween edition of Mac Break Studio. Over the summer, I was watching Stranger Things, and one of the things I like about the show are their title treatments. In particular, they have this title that floats towards the screen to introduce each episode. And I wanted to figure out how to do that in Final Cut. And I was going to do it earlier, but, you know, time just got away from me. But it's now October, and since it's Halloween, I thought it would be a good time to reintroduce this particular effect. So to begin, let's jump over to Motion. I already have it open, so from the File menu, I'll choose New from Project Browser. And I need to choose a project type. In this case, I'm going to choose a Final Cut Pro title and make sure the preset is set for Broadcast 1080, which matches the clip I'll be working with. I want my frame rate to be 30, and I'll leave the duration set at 12 seconds. That should be enough, and I'll click Open. So here I have my title. The first thing I want to get rid of is this drop zone. I don't need it. So down in the layers list, I'm going to uncheck the title background and select just the text layer. I'll double click the text to enter text entry mode and I'll type out the title. With the text selected, I'll go over to the inspector and increase the text size. Next, I'll choose a font. Now the actual font used in the show is called Benguit. Ben gu, ben gua, ben whatever. Press Escape to exit the text entry mode, and I'll move this text to the center of the screen using the alignment guides. Great. Now I need to publish some parameters. I can certainly animate this text up or down in Final Cut Pro, but I need the ability to animate the text in Z space so that the text looks like it's flying past the camera. So to do that, I'll select the text layer. And in the text properties of the inspector, I'm going to publish all the position properties. And what that does is make the X, Y, and Z position coordinates available within Final Cut Pro for keyframing. To verify that you've published the correct parameters, select the project icon at the top of the layers list. Then select Project. And as you can see, all three position coordinates appear under Publish Parameters. So really that's about it and we're done with motion. Now I just need to save this title so that it appears in Final Cut Pro 10. I'll go to the File menu and choose Save. And I'll choose a category first. I'm going to put this into the 3D category so that it shows up with all my other 3D titles. I'll name this Stranger Things Fly Through and click Publish. Next, I'll jump over to Final Cut Pro 10 and create a new project by pressing Command N. I'll name the project Fly Through and press Return. Now I have an empty timeline. So the first thing we need to do is add some background generators. To do that, I'll jump up to the Generators and Title sidebar. And under Generators, I'll go down to the Solids category, and I'll select this Vivid Solid and press E to add it to the timeline. Then I'll select a white generator and press E to edit that one into the timeline as well. Finally, I'll go back to the project browser, select my video clip, and press E to append it to the end. Now I have my three necessary clips, and I'll press Shift Z to fit them to the window. Currently, these two generators are too long. I'll select the first one and press Ctrl D, and then type out three period for three seconds and press return. I'll rinse and repeat for the white generator and make that one three seconds as well. Now this first generator is the wrong color, and I'd like to make it a nice Halloween orange. So I'll go up to the Publish Parameter section and choose Orange from the menu. I'll leave the white generator at its default color. So next, I want to add my published text, so I'm going to jump back to the Titles and Generators sidebar, Spill Open Titles, select 3D, and there's my Stranger Things fly-through text I published from Motion. So I'm just going to drag it into the timeline above my three clips and just extend it out a bit to make sure it lasts the full length of my project. Right now, it's just text over background, and I need the clips in the primary storyline to appear inside the letters. So for that, we're going to use a composite mode. With the text layer selected, I'll go into the Video Inspector, and in the Compositing section, under Blend Mode, I'm going to choose Stencil Alpha. Now the clips are punching through the letters over a black background, and you can see this as I skim the timeline. So the next thing I want to do is animate the text. I'll move the playhead to the beginning of the timeline, 
and with the text still selected, go back to the Title Inspector. And look at that. There's my three position parameters that I published for motion. I'll set keyframes for all three position parameters, X, Y, and Z. Next, I'll move the playhead to about halfway through the last video clip, right about here. And now I'll just use the Z hot scrubber and drag upward to move the text toward us. I'll keep dragging and notice that I'm pushing in toward the top of the letter A. Because I set keyframes for the other coordinates, I can use the Y scrubber to reposition the text, then go back to the Z scrubber until the camera flies cleanly through the center of the letter. I'll play that back. The text moves toward us with orange, then it cuts to white, then it cuts to our video clip. That's looking really great, but there's one more step that will really make this a Stranger Things episode title. I'll select the edit point between the first two generators and press Command T to add a one second cross dissolve. Then I'll select the second edit point and press Command T again. The second transition I want a bit longer, so I'll drag the edge until the tool tap says the transition is three seconds. Now let's see what the final effect looks like. Pretty dang cool. So now you know how to create the Stranger Things text fly-through effect.